We're heading into week 15 of the NFL season, but before we get into all that, we're going to take a look back and challenge some of y'all's overreactions on social media coming out of week 14. New York Post overreaction expert Steve Serby is here for this week's challenge flag, and he's also one heck of a columnist as well. Hey, I appreciate that, Serby. Uh, he threw the challenge flag on me on the first take, but we got it right. Let's get straight into it right now because the first overreaction – Coming from social media is Brian Dable is to blame for the Giants' loss. What sayeth you? Well, I'm going to have to throw the flag on that one. Uh, look, Brian Dable, everybody sang his praises when the Giants were 6-1 and one and 7-2, and two, and deservedly so. And now that they're 7-5-1, and one, he's fair game, no doubt about it. But, but look at the Eagles – in their, at their stage of development and look at the Giants in year one of the Dable Joe Shane regime. We're talking about two different leagues, the Eagles with an MVP candidate at Jalen Hurts and those wide receivers that Daniel Jones can only wish that he had. The Giants didn't have Leonard Williams for the Eagles game. They didn't have a Dory Jackson. They didn't have Xavier McKinney. And they don't have David Tyree for a helmet catch and they don't have Plaxico Burris and they don't have Odell and they don't have Victor Cruz, et cetera, et cetera. Dable deserves some blame. No question about it. Anytime you get beat 48, 22, it's on the head coach. But the bottom line is the Eagles are a Super Bowl contender and the Giants have yet to show they have a chance Sunday night against the commanders that they are a playoff contender, but they look like a pretender against the Eagles. Yeah, for course, Dables, it's hard to be aggressive versus the aggressor. Like you said, the Eagles are the wish list right now when it comes to NFL talent heading into the Christmas season. Uh, let's get to the next one. We're going out to Florham Park. The Jets will finish last in the AFC East. Uh, let me – I hope this doesn't hit you, but – oh, sorry about that, Brandon. No. <laughs> no, I, um, I actually see the Dolphins fading. Wow. Uh, yeah, the Dolphins' schedule, they're at Buffalo this uh, Sunday, and I don't believe uh, the weather will be uh, what Tua and the Fish want. Uh, then they're home to the Packers. That's a winnable game. But then they finish the season at New England, another cold-weather game, and then home to the Jets. And if the Jets beat them, the Jets already beat the Dolphins this season, and so they have the tiebreaker over the Dolphins. Uh, I, and the Jets... Look, the Jets are home to the Lions. They're home to the Jaguars at Seattle. Tough game, but the Jets have shown that they can be road warriors. And then they're at Miami, and that's a winnable game without a doubt. The team to watch, of course, is the Patriots. That defense is coming on, as we saw on uh, Monday night. And uh, I just think the Dolphins, I, I think Tua is showing signs of regression here and in those cold weather sites, it's not going to be easy playing pitch and catch with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. So I see the Jets making it and the Dolphins not making it. Yeah, I remember my year playing with the Miami Dolphins. You're practicing in 70 something degree weather. All of a sudden you're going out and it's like 30 degrees outside. It's it's it affects you. It can it can actually affect you. Uh, let's go on. Well, it, if it affects if it affects Brandon Lon, uh, London, it's <laughs> going to affect Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Hey, all right. Uh, the Jets. You mentioned they play the Detroit Lions. So going into our next overreaction, the Detroit Lions will reach the playoffs. Well, I'm not going to throw the flag for a couple of reasons. Look, don't we want to see the Lions in the playoffs? The Lions have never won a Super Bowl. The last time they won a playoff game was 1991, before you were born, Brandon. And the last time they were in the playoffs was 2016. Now, Jared Goff is certainly playing like an elite quarterback these days. And he's got Jamison Williams back now, the, uh, the rookie who's been, who tore his ACL at Alabama to join St. Brown. He's got a healthier DeAndre Swift. Um, so let's... I'm I'm pulling for the Lions that play the Jets this weekend. That's that's not going to be easy. But Dan Campbell has them peaking at the right time, and they're a game behind Seattle. Seattle has to play at San Francisco. I'm sorry, home to San Francisco this Thursday night, 
And even with Brock Purdy or whoever the quarterback is, San Francisco's defense is going to create some problems for Geno Smith. And then, of course, you've got the uh, horrific NFC South. The Panthers are still alive. Tom Brady and the Bucks are barely breathing. Uh, the Falcons are still alive. But and the Packers are still alive. Look, but let's let's cheer on the Lions here. I'm I'm going to root for these guys. Um, th if they beat the Jets on Sunday, they're in, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm I'm rooting for that Cinderella story as well, Serby. I mean, I was born in '84. I don't know if the Lions were good back then, but uh, I'll go to Wikipedia or something for that. Last but not least, and I want you to go all the way in on this one. Dak Prescott's play will be the reason the Cowboys don't make it to the Super Bowl. That, that's a tough one. I'm, I'm debating whether I'm going to hold it up here. I, 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 look, I love Dak. He's a tremendous leader. He showed how clutch he can be with that 98-yard drive at the end of the Houston game to save the game for the Cowboys. But the problem Dak will have in the playoffs will be facing a 49ers defense that – is just ferocious or an Eagles defense that can put the heat on them and that can dominate the Cowboys offensive line. They're going to have to run the ball with Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott, but Dak has thrown nine interceptions this season. He cannot afford to throw a pick if they're playing a playoff game in Philadelphia where he'll have to go toe to toe with Jalen Hurts and the lack of explosive plays in this Dallas offense, it's a shame for Dak that Amari Cooper was traded away because he sure could have used him. So I'm going to reluctantly throw the flag because I like Dak. I think he's a tremendous leader. He can be clutch. But to get to the Super Bowl, they're going to have to get through either the 49ers defense or the Eagles on the road and I don't think Dak's going to be able to do it, so I'm going to have to throw the flag. There we go. We were all sitting here waiting for the Cowboys to implode like they do every year. Steve Serby, it was awesome talking to you. Thank you for uh, your time. Thank you, Brandon.